All right, everyone, I'm on vacation and I just thought I'd just stop by the bookstore really quick and hope I don't do too much damage. <laughs> there are two books I really want. Um, and I thought I'd just kind of stop by and try sticking to the list, but we'll see. I'm going to print these out and they're just like the night show. I have a lot of trouble with them. Little great. Hey everyone. <laughs> I'm finally home. I tried um, filming this at a park, but it was it was so loud. Everywhere I went, it was just a a bad decision uh, location wise and my car was getting so hot it's above 90 degrees where I'm at and um, I was gonna make it <laughs> all right so I did plenty of damage <laughs> while I was at village well I told myself you know I'm running errands I'm taking care of things let me just step in and take a peek the first wrong move I made was I saw that they had Brad and Kyle Goodman, um, You Gotta Be You. And I don't know if you follow them on Instagram. They have a segment every Monday called Messy Mondays. And it's just so much fun. Um, Kyle's just really funny, incredibly insightful, and also just a really open-hearted person. So I already had it on my mind that I wanted to get their uh, memoir. So this book is basically about Kyle realizing that the way that he grew up or how we all grew up is through a, a prism of, of like what society uh, expects us to, to do. How are we supposed to perform and be whatever it is that everyone else ex uh, expects of us? And this is their journey to really accept themselves and learn, just like the title says, that you gotta be you. So I, I know I'm gonna read through this very quickly. I don't know when, um, this year, I keep changing my mind what I'm reading month to month, and I, I had kind of this like very rigid schedule for this year, and it, it's changed a little bit. Once it hit the middle of the year, I really started to change things up, and I definitely wanna read this soon, so we'll see what happens. So this is the first book, actually, when I 
stepped into um, Village Well. They have it on this display on one of their like towers, their circular towel, oh, towels, their circular <laughs> towers. And so um, that did me in. Uh, so yes, this is the first one. I'm sorry I'm so winded. It was just, it's so hot outside. And again, I'm running errands and trying to squeeze things in and um, probably shouldn't have stopped by the bookstore <laughs> or else I wouldn't be so winded. The second book is by local authors. It's an anthology and it's called South Central Noir. Um, there is another one, another anthology that was put out that's called Brooklyn Noir. I have not read it. I just read it on the back. And on the back of the book, it says, Now the Akashic Noir series, Forensic Study of Southern California, sharpens its focus on one of Los Angeles' most recognized neighborhoods. Within these pages, you'll find stories of those walking the straight and narrow until something untoward happens. Maybe it's someone taking a step out of line, getting caught up in a circumstance, spiraling out of their control. Maybe they're planning the grift, the grab, whatever it is to finally put them over. Other times the steps they take are to get themselves or people they care about out from under. You'll find the offerings in these pages are a rich mix of tone tales told of hope, survival, revenge, and triumph excursions beyond the headlines and the hype so that just sounded really good and um i i kind of got taken in by uh i don't usually do this but i just saw that it was autographed and i just wanted to buy it also purely for that reason um and i also appreciate at village well they don't put the stickers on the books i'm not a fan of that so i really appreciated that they just have it kind of tucked in here and uh, I, I, I'm just kind of looking forward to reading about uh, my own neighborhood. It seems nice. <sighs> now the next book I've been seeing uh, floating around Instagram and by other uh, booktubers that I really admire and that is Witches by Brenda Lozano. Let's look at that cover. That's so pretty. Um, let me see. You know who just recently posted about this was, um, I think it's Russell from Ink and Paper Blog. I love his YouTube channel. <laughs> um, I, I just saw him post something on Instagram about this. So it was kind of already on my mind on top of, I think I've been reading about this on and off for a year through articles and stuff like that. So I just decided to pick up a copy and I'll read just a little bit on the sleeve. And it says, Paloma is dead, but before she was murdered, before she was even Paloma, she was a traditional healer named Gaspar. And then she uh, teaches somebody else, her cousin, Feliciana, the secrets of the ceremonies. And then it goes on to say that um, Paloma is murdered and a journalist comes into town and uh, to figure out what happened to her. And the sleeve goes on to say, weaving together two parallel nar narratives that mirror and refract each other. This extraordinary novel envisions the healer as storyteller and the writer as healer and offers a generous and nuanced understanding of a world that can be at turns violent and exultant, cruel and full of hope. So this sounds riveting just from the sleeve alone and the beautiful cover got me. <sighs> On top of that, when I pulled out this book, another book that was right behind it peeked out and it was a book I have seen. Um, every time I kind of stop by Barnes and Noble, I take a peek at it, but I hadn't bought it. And so this time around, I wanted to buy it. And that is a novel in verse, Dreaming of You by Melissa Lozada Oliva? Oliva. Oliva. So this is told in a, a poetic 
rhyme style rather than prose, I believe. And it's about a character that's lonely and decides to try to bring back uh, the life of Selena, the singer. <laughs> and uh, bizarre and hilarity ensues, basically. Um, uh, this is another one. I love the cover. I'm really loving these red covers. Isn't that beautiful? I just, I love it. All right. The last book, now I really shouldn't have gotten because <laughs> it's really not on the list of like the type of books I'm going towards, but I'm also really drawn to nonfiction. So I found a book that's called The Library of Fragile History, and it's by Andrew Pedigree and Arthur Der Wedewen. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, instead of reading you inside the sleeve, I'll just read uh, one of the, what do you say, critical praises on the back by Judith Flanders, of, who's the author of A Place for Everything. And it says, what is the library? Is it a mute display of personal wealth and power or of a humble devotion to God, a routine community resource or a waste of taxpayers' money? In the library, we are led nimbly through the centuries, seeing how it has been all of these things and more as an author, as an author's place on the shelf, a cornucopia of bookish history. So this sounds great. There's another book I have somewhere <laughs> floating in my apartment that I haven't finished. And it's by Jen Campbell, who's also a booktuber, a poet and author of children's books and um, adult fiction, nonfiction. And I haven't finished it. I can't think of the name of the book. I think it's called The Bookstore Book. It's a really cute name. It's one of those books that I wanted to just read aloud here and there to my daughter and I kind of put it by the wayside. Um, so I think that was a book I was going to get back to this coming December, but I think I'm gonna hold off and pick books that I have on my shelf that have to do with books. So there's the bookstore book, there's the library, and I do have a book, I think it's called Books Go to War. And I think I just kind of want to read those together for one particular month next year. Oh, so shopping <laughs> winded me, winded me out. Also, <laughs> right when I got to the um, checkout area, I went ahead and grabbed this little, sorry, I'm booked. I don't have many pins. I just always feel kind of guilty. I don't really put them on display. Um, the way that they deserve. So I'll find something to stick it on. Maybe I could kind of um, stick it in one of my plants I have in my desk. I thought that'd be kind of cute. So I could look at it and kind of drive myself to realize why I'm working, which is just to scoop up that money and buy more books. <sighs> All right, everyone. I hope you like this very quick video I tried to put together. Um, if you're watching this, like, subscribe, make a comment, let me know about any uh, book buying adventures you've gone on recently. <laughs> I'd love to hear it. Alright everyone, I'll see you later.